Comrade Shimabani, Comrade uh, Anselm, uh, Dureke, there are very many, a long list of our comrades that have fallen, and um, we want to ob observe a minute silence to respect them. A minute silence, please. convicts parading at the presidential villa with a sinister agenda to determine the fate of Nigerians with the purpose of derailing democracy. We titled this statement, Beware of Regrouping of Corrupt Politicians in Asso Rock, Cielo wants Tinubu. Gentlemen of the press, on behalf of the board and members of the Civil Liberties Organization, Cielo, welcome you to this press conference. We are all witnesses to how Nigeria, our very dear country, which holds so much promises as a global leader at independence on October 1, 1960, has been destroyed by successive leaders. The founding fathers of Nigeria from the north and south had great dreams and they patriotically laid good foundation for a great country. The military forcefully took over power through a number of coup d'etat and began the process of the neutralization of Nigeria. Through determination and spilling of the blood of innocent citizens, the civil societies, the media, and other patriotic Nigerians were able to chase the military out of power, culminating in the historic return to civilian rule in 1999. However, within 24 years between then and now, the political class paraded themselves as civilian leaders have brought the country to her knees through massive corruption and stealing of our common patrimony. Nigeria is now officially rated as the poverty capital of the world, one of the most corrupt countries, a safe haven for bandits and terrorists, a country with so much oil and gas resources but imports few, four moribund and dead refineries that got billions of dollars in turnaround maintenance, which is a conduit pipe for stealing public funds by every new government. Nigeria is now a comfortable environment and destination for all manners of criminal enterprise to thrive. The implication of poor and inept management of the country is supported by the recent report by the Debt Management Office, which disclosed that, Nigeria is, that Nigeria's total foreign debt for the period ending March 31, 2023, just recently, has risen to 49 0.85 trillion naira. That's approximately 108.30 billion dollars. From 46.26 trillion naira as at December 21st, 2022. Amidst these humiliating setbacks, the civilian rulers of Nigeria have perfected the act of impunity, where they regard the military imposed constitution as a mere document that can only be obeyed by the poor. The CLO is appalled by the recent development in the country where in June, a former governor of Delta State, indicted for corruption, led Governor Sheyi Makinde of Oyo State and former Governor Yeson Wika of River State to visit President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in Asorok, presidential villa. Ibori, a member of the People's Democratic Party, was in office when Tinubu was governor of Lagos State between 1999 and 2007. And on July 12, former Governor Lucky Gbineje of Edo State, who was also indicted for corruption but took advantage of a plea bargain to escape jail, was among more than 20 former governors, including Ibori, who visited Tinubu at the presidential villa. Apart from the few good ones among them, many of these governors who hid under an amorphous nom de guerre, class of 99, were notorious for setting the template for the massive corruption in the country by fleecing their states and stashing the looted funds in foreign bank accounts. While briefly journalists on behalf of the class of 99, Igbinedion has said the visit was to assure Mr. Tinubu of their support and cooperation. We met, according to him, we met the president as a colleague governor that laid the foundation of the current democracy in Nigeria in 1999 which has continued to be strengthened up to today. Ibenedio claimed that they went to congratulate Tinubu on his election and to thank him 
for appointing one of them, George Akume, as the secretary to the government of the Federation. He further claimed that they spoke about security, electricity supply to Nigerians, which they said were key factors in the development of any economy, with Mr. Tinubu assuring them of the administration's preparedness to tackle the issues headlong. But like many Nigerians, we in the CLO are not deceived by the, group, by the regrouping of these former governors who are now shedding crocodile tears over the state of anomie in the country. They had eight years in office and some of them went to the Senate. What did they do? They continued in their old ways. And what manner of support would they be giving to Tinubu beyond an arrangement to accommodate them in the underdeveloped, in the underdevelopment of the country? The case of James Onanifei Bori, a former governor of Delta State from 1999 to 2007, is more rankling. He is officially the only former governor who was jailed in a foreign country. He was in 2012 sentenced to 13 years in prison for money laundering by a court in the United Kingdom. Ibori fled Nigeria in April 2010 while answering to corruption charges, forcing the Economic and, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to enlist the help of the Interpol to apprehend him in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and extradited him to the UK where a case of massive corruption and money laundering had built up against him. He served only four years out of the 13 years sentence handed by the UK court and was released from jail in 2016. A very powerful politician, Ibori is said to have stolen more than $78.5 million of Delta State public funds and partly funded the election of uh, the late Umar Yaradwa as president of Nigeria in 2007. Ibori's influence in the Niger Delta and indeed Nigeria in general is said to still be strong as persons seeking elective offices consulting for support as a result of his political networks and the depth of his pocket, courtesy of ill-gotten wealth. He was recently appointed as a patron of former Governor's Forum in Nigeria, a position he now leverages to curry personal favors and manipulate political power in Nigeria. The CLO is urging Nigerians to keep vigil over our hard-won democracy as irregular visits and hobnobbing of the former governors and corrupt politicians with Tinubu at the seat of power is a clear and present danger to efforts to rebuild our battered country. We appeal to President Tinubu, whose election is being seriously challenged at the election petitions court to not convert the highest office of President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria into a rehabilitation center for politicians who put the country in this sorry state. Indeed, most Nigerians would question the propriety of President Tinubu, Paredi, Bori, and other criminal politicians as good men at the highest seat of power in the country. The CLO, which led from the front in our collective quest and struggle for a just society, where citizens should be proud to call themselves Nigerians, is now drawing local and international attention to the regrouping of these questionable individuals who are mobilizing and are poised to determine the future of the country in accordance with their solid standard and definition. Impoverished Nigerians who are currently reeling in pains and anguish from the so-called subsidy remover, multiple taxation, high electricity tariff, and other forms of neo-colonial slavery as a direct consequence of corruption must now quickly wake up from their slumber to find their lost voices. Collectively, Nigerians say no to blood-sucking groups of vampires who have left our, our wealthy country in ruins and transformed it into a vast killing field of innocent citizens. We call on all Nigerians to organize and mobilize to take back their country. For eternal vigilance is the prize of liberty. Thank you for coming as we count on the media as our long standing partners to join us in this long walk to freedom. <laughs> Gentlemen of the press, as we were coming here this morning to address this press conference, 
That is why you don't find it as part of this statement. This inept corruption infested government of Bola Ahmed Tinubu has again increased fuel prices to 700 naira. Officially, at the NMPC pump price, it is 617 naira we land. But of course, you know the ripple effect, what that will mean, it is now 700 naira. Where does that leave Nigerians? 700 naira a liter of fuel. And I can tell you this morning that the prices are marching upwards. This is a man who promised, who, who promised palliatives. They got $800 million in further loans from the Bretton Woods and the World Bank, which they are now sharing among themselves. We all know that the, the, the National Assembly is cornering 70 billion of that amount for itself. 35 billion naira is going to the National Judicial Council. We in the CLO know that all of this is is a well-designed conspiracy to compromise the, the, the judiciary. But Nigerians are no longer fools. We must now all get our loans to prepare to engage these politicians. They are not politicians because I also know that politicians are people who are, be, are a group of leaders who have the interests of their people at heart. But what we have, by even the regrouping of the so-called class of 99 people, governors, when we have succeeded in chasing away the military, regrouped and managed to seize the different political offices and governors of the 36 states of the federation. What did we get in return? They stole all the resources across the states, apart from a few governors like Donald Duke. Just some of them, you can mention them with, a, with our fingertips. It does not matter whether a politician today is your father, your brother, or your uncle. If, if, if he's not patriotic, if he does not have the interests of Nigerians at heart, we must organize and mobilize against these people now before it is too late for all of us. Nigeria cannot go the path of Sudan. We cannot go the path of Ukraine and Russia. We have a country that we call our own today. A small country like Seychelles is rejecting Nigerian passport holders. Why? Because we have lost it. We can no longer close our mouths <coughs> and allow this band of few individuals to hold our country hostage. The time to rescue our country is now. If you have questions, we'll take it. Executive Director of the CLO is here. We have uh, other senior members of the CLO seated here. <laughs> Are your media My answer? name is Joseph When you Nigeria take back, how will Nigerians take back their country? Basically, that is a summary of um, your yes. question. Well, it's, it's uh, a question for all of us. How are we going to take back our country? Are we going to sit back, um, just throw our hands in the air, and um, say, oh, these people are bigger than us, they are, they are more powerful. We can take back our country by individually raising our voices and collectively raising our voices. Because a country of 200 million people, if you have 50 million people talking, saying, telling the government that enough is enough, I'm sure they will be, they will be very uncomfortable. So they are doing what they are doing because the rest of us are just quiet. Each time they push the bar, we are just. They push the bar, we are just. But if they push the bar, even in countries in Tunisia, you know how the, the Arab, uh, Arab string started? It is just a card pusher. Somebody, just a local government, they, they, they increased the tax and asked him to pay uh, some few pennies more. And he said no, that he cannot even make profit from what he's doing. Pay uh, some few pennies more. And he said no, that he cannot even make profit from what he's doing. And then they seized this, uh, what, whatever he was pushing to sell. I took it to the office. The man just simply went to his house, told his people that he's going to kill himself, that his only means of livelihood has been taken from him. He took well when they set himself ablaze. And the people he told, told others that this is the reason why this man set himself ablaze. And he just caught on. Before you knew it, everywhere was, uh, was ablaze. But Nigerians are used to tolerating suffering. How you guys got here this morning, I'm sure you went through harrowing experiences. You are going to return from The money you've been paying getting here, by the time you are living here now, it's doubled, it's, it's, it's tripled. And then you just go to your offices again, you are just. Maybe the quality of food you are eating will have to drop to give way for further expenditures. Now, the question is how long are we going to tolerate this direct assault on our livelihood? This is an existential issue. It's about life and death. It's an existential issue. So if you do not rise up, whether you are a lawyer, a medical doctor, a journalist, whatever profession that you find yourself, if you do not say that enough is enough, I can tell you oppressors do not give up. The only language oppressors understand is... is it's a stronger force of resistance. When that comes, we, the CLO is not going to negotiate with them. We're not going to hold any meeting with anybody. 
We are going to continue what we are doing. We have a tradition. The CLO have a tradition of resisting obnoxious and oppressive policies. And we are not going to hold meetings. CLO has never held meetings with any government. Whether you are a governor or you are president, we have never had that tradition of we monitor the process of governance under our governance and democracy program. Once we see that the policies that is being pushed out by any government, whether at the national or subnational level, is anti-people, we confront it. That's our strategy. And so for us to confront it, we need to also um, educate Nigerians, inform Nigerians that this is now the path to follow. When Tinubu came on May 29, he, he, he gave an address where on that day he said he was taking up for a subsidy. And it opened debates. You know? We were watching as an organization how and what strategies Nigerians will adopt in dealing with that. Nigerians simply adjusted. We have a duty as a human rights organization. We don't just say we are a civil society organization. We are a human rights organization. And the right to life is inherent. It's inalienable. It's given by God. So when government push policies that seems to push you into extinction, you have a right to resist. It is within the ambits of the law for you to exist, yeah, sorry, to resist using every legal means at your disposal. The truth is if this morning we, we have, um, we can find 500 Nigerians who will go to the gate of the National Assembly and sit down on the floor, that nobody's going to come out and go out. Even if you shoot and kill, they will be tired of killing. We all know what happened at the Tiananmen Square in China in 1989 or so, where the Chinese army, the, the, the People's Army of China, were using armored car to crush the Chinese who were who embarked on peaceful protests. It is on record that they crushed 50,000 Chinese. And that was what brought about the Chinese, the, the quote unquote, the My Chinese Revolution that have brought China today as a world power. So if people think you can sit back, you can relax, and use your small salary to be adjusting. The scale, you are just such that the scale itself will, will, will overshoot. There will be nowhere to, I think we are now at that point.